Now, uh, I will push this model uh, to the protest steel, and it's been created in protest structure. So for this purpose, I'm going to select steel design drop-down menu and select the load protest steel. All these members are imported to the protest steel environment. Uh, first, I would like to show our macros. So, uh, more than 90% of the connections can be done with these macros. But, um, however, time to time we need to create our uh, own custom connections. So, today I would like to show uh, a hunch connection uh, for, for, for this point, and uh, we will uh, transform this connection to the uh, user defined macro. And uh, the last one will be uh, the circular base plate uh, to this position, and we will add anchors to uh, that plate. First of all, I would like to hide some unnecessary uh, components, uh, some unnecessary members, uh, which is given in, the, in this view. So uh, let's double click to the empty space and select the filter option. In the profile tab, uh, I can unmark, for example, Perlin, Gert, braces here, and select the OK button. All these members will be hided in the selected view. You can also uh, play with the view range with the uh, minimum and maximum values. OK, uh, now uh, I would like to uh, talk about uh, a little bit uh, the member heights. So uh, as you see, the beam flange is uh, located is a little bit more upper than the column height. So I need to um, extend the column height to create a proper connection. For this purpose, I'm going to select the member and uh, change the end offset as, for example, 50 millimeter. Of course, we can uh, copy this adjustment to the rest of the colors. Sorry. Okay. So, of course, uh, we can copy this adjustment uh, here. So, I'm going to select these members here, which will be copied. Okay. You can uh, press to the control button for uh, multi selection. And I'm going to select match properties comment here. And uh, we can select the adjusted member to copy this adjustment. As you see, all columns height uh, has been increased with this value. So uh, I would like to isolate these two members so for this purpose you can just right click and click to the show only selected button and uh, for the rotational center we can determine the rotational center of this column uh, to turn around this in in this view for this uh, we can select to the f9 uh, in our keyboard and uh, select the pivot point uh, so we can quickly turn around this point and create our uh, own design. Now, I would like to create a plate, uh, end plate actually. So, uh, to do this, I need to create section on the surface of the flange. So, let's create a section by two points on the surface of the flange. Okay. Now, uh, as you see, the coordinates are stayed in the global coordinate system. So I would like to move this coordinate system to my view plane. For this purpose, select the view plane command here. Okay. It's important, uh, otherwise, uh, you will not be able to insert your plate properly. So 
uh, first method to insert a plate is dx, dy, and dz. So I will show uh, how we do this. First, we can select the intersection uh, of those two points. And uh, for, the three po uh, for the third point, I will press to the enter button and uh, I will specify the distance. For example, dy minus 700 millimeter uh, and press to the enter button. Again, I will do the similar enter dx minus 150 millimeter and uh, press to the enter button. And uh, I will select the first point. As you see in the 3D view, uh, the plate has been generated here. So you can double click on it and you can uh, arrange the position of uh, position in depth. Uh, for example, in this case, I would like to select front and uh, thickness can be stayed as 20 millimeters. Okay. You can also uh, set this alignment with Control and W buttons on your keyboard. Uh, it's a shortcut for uh, the position of that command. Okay, uh, let's uh, turn back to the R section view. So uh, in this view, I'm gonna roll back uh, the plate definition. Okay, you can use Control and Z command for this. At this time, uh, the second insertion, we will talk about the second insertion method. Uh, for this method, I will use the points. So uh, for these intersections, I, I will create points here. And we can also create the parallel of them. So to do this, we have a create parallel points command. You can right click and specify the distance, for example. In this case, uh, we can type in 700 millimeter. OK, again, I will draw line between those two points and uh, the parallel points were generated here. Now we have all corners of this plate, so I can quickly draw this via these points here. Again, with a control W button, you can change the alignment of it. So uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is bolts. So for the bolts, let's select the section view again. And we have a create bolt group command here. After the selection of this, I need to select first plate, then uh, the column flange. Uh, if uh, there would be another plate, uh, we could also select this plate. Okay, then right click. Now I will draw the X direction of the balls. For example, we can use uh, this line for it. Now, uh, as you see, uh, our balls seems in wireframe mode and uh, they are not valid here. So uh, because of the undefined position, so let's um, place them in a proper positions and it will seem as solid. So uh, when you double click on it, you can get into the bolt properties. So you can add washers, nuts here, uh, and you can change the positions. So in the X position, for example, 30 point, uh, 37.5 and 75 millimeters. Uh, I'm typing in uh, both spacings here. For example, 3 multiply 100 millimeter. It means that we have 3 times 100 millimeter spacing uh, on the y direction and 2 multiply 145. So let's select the apply button and OK. As you see, uh, in 3D view, our bolt group has been generated. 
Okay, I think there's a question here. Ah, okay. So again, I will minimize it. So um, after the bolt group, uh, we need to create uh, our cuts. So uh, as you see, the uh, beam and this uh, column is colliding here. So we need to add a cut object. There are several cut objects uh, over here, as you see, polygon cuts, uh, cut this with that, cut this with that boundary, or uh, 2D fitting uh, macro here. Uh, if you ask me the easiest way to create a macro is 2D fitting macro. So you can uh, simply select the member and uh, define the cut plane, okay? on the edge of the end plate here, and the cut has been generated. Okay, for example, in this 3D view, if we want to return back to the global uh, coordinate system, we can just click to the global button. Um, now, uh, we will add our welds uh, for the... Um, uh, for the uh, uh, intersecting uh, edge between beam and end plate here. Okay, for this purpose, I will create uh, I will create the again one more section. Okay, or uh, we can do this also in 3D view. So we have two weld commands here, as you see. So I'm going to select the general purpose weld, which means uh, create weld command. First, we can select the edge of the uh, beam uh, web here, for example, let's select it, and the main plate. With the Alt D button on your keyboard, you can quickly review that uh, your weld is uh, uh, defined properly or not. For example, uh, as we talked before, the magenta color uh, was uh, a sign of the um, uh, a sign that uh, the weld has been created uh, and annotated properly. So uh, let's double click on it. Uh, you can uh, change the weld material here, uh, play with the types as you see in here. And uh, you can also change the operation location. For example, it might be on site or on the workshop, or we can change the weld type. So in this case, I want all around. So uh, the weld will be created all around the profile uh, with this selection, okay? So um, the next thing that I want to talk about is hunch plate. So I will create a triangular plate on the uh, bottom of center line uh, on the beam flange. So for this purpose, uh, I will create a section which uh, cuts from the center line on the beam. Again, views, create view by two points, okay? So column and beams, uh, column and uh, column and beam center line are the same, so I will draw on the column here. Okay. Now, um, for the triangular plate, we have two points, end plate corner and the intersection uh, of the beam and the end plate here. And third one, the third point will be on the beam flange somewhere here. But uh, to create a proper point here, I need to move my work plane uh, with the aligned way, uh, with, the, uh, with the angular way. So to create this, select the member, right click, and set work plane. I'm, go I'm going to select by three points. So first we can select the, uh, this intersection point, 
you can press to the control button to snap the uh, node on the flange okay and uh, the third point will be perpendic uh, perpendicular to the second one okay now we can uh, create a point on the flange of the beam so uh, I will click to the uh, point comment here and I'm going to create a point on this intersection then uh, we can copy this point to the 50 centimeter away uh, which is on the which is positioned on the flange for this purpose we can use copy linear comment okay so we can reset it and uh, it will be on y direction so what uh, what i told before uh, the x direction shows uh, with the uh, red arrow here so we can type in for example uh, 500 millimeter and uh, click to the copy button and as you see uh, the point has been generated here now we can uh, quickly create a triangular plate and in 3d view you will be able to see this hunch plate here of course uh, there will be a hunch flange so i would like to move this corner uh, up for uh, like 30 millimeter so first we can select the alt button on our keyboard and select the corner then uh, you can select right click we have a move special command but the important thing is uh, again our coordinate system has stayed in the uh, local work plane so i would like to return back to the uh, global coordinate system with this button again uh, move special linear way so i would like to move this corner uh, 30 millimeter upward here okay so now uh, we can uh, define the flange of the hunch plate uh, for uh, for this we have a sectional plate macro uh, over here we can select this macro and select the triangular plate and uh, we can draw the direction of the sectional plate as you see so i would like to double click on it and uh, we can change the width for example uh, 150 millimeter uh, might be suitable for here and the thickness uh, can be uh, 15 millimeter here okay let's apply and click to the okay button and uh, i would like to say that uh, this macro creates uh, its wealth automatically here now uh, i would like to show how we create chamfers on the plates so let's isolate this member with the show only selected button so again i will uh, press to the alt button on my keyboard and for multi selection you can uh, press to the control button at the same time here and double click on it so as a chamfer type we can select the uh, radius as type 2 i generally use this uh, chamfer type and the radius can be for example 30 millimeter here again we can uh, show all members here now i need to also add uh, welds for the uh, between end plate and the triangular plate here and also with the lower flange of the beam and this triangular plate so for this purpose again i will do the same stuff uh, that i've done before uh, weld command select the edge then main member again select the edge then main member here so as you see all the welds uh, are shown in magenta color so i can continue it means that uh, welds 
uh, have been created properly. So let's click to the weld and I would like to uh, create this weld type as front and back. Okay. So with Alt D button, you will see that the welds created for the uh, front and back uh, sides of the triangular plate. Okay, uh, let's add our stiffeners. Uh, for this purpose, we have a stiffeners macros over here. So I'm gonna select the stiffener macro and uh, select the object. Then we can specify the position of this uh, stiffener here. For example, uh, for the here, and I will add two more stiffeners for the hunch connection. Now uh, we have created the uh, hunch connection in our model uh, manually. So uh, there are some uh, selectability and visibility settings here. You can uh, turn off this uh, cut command uh, in the view or you can activate it again. Uh, so uh, first, Actually, before we create the manual macro, we need to uh, specify the work plane to the point. So for this purpose, I'm going to select uh, work plane to point. Okay. Then we can specify a, a, a point on the middle of the flange here. Okay. This is important before the uh, creation of manual macro, okay. Then uh, we can select all components of this connection and select the manual macro icon here. As you see, when you hover over, uh, you can see uh, the tips about uh, its usage. So let's click on it. Again, for example, we can type a name here, a hunch connection for IPE IPE uh, 300, uh, we can give a name here. So as a type, I will select a collision because in this case, uh, when the column and beam members are colliding, this uh, macro will be applied, okay? So let's select the collision. If you want to see the requirements uh, of this type, you can just select this question mark button and uh, review these requirements here. So let's create a new group. I can also add this uh, connection to the another groups, but I want to create a new group here. We can retrieve as created members, click this uh, button here and select main members. In this case, I need to select first uh, beam as a main member, then uh, column. Uh, in macro creation, we do the opposite. Uh, so we just select the main member, which is column and then beam. So it's a little bit different with the macro creation. And uh, let's save and uh, OK button to close the uh, property window. OK, I will. Uh, now I'm going to copy this connection uh, to the opposite side here. OK. Again, I need to uh, specify the work plane here. So set work plane to point. And I will do the same as I did in the previous one. Okay. Now we can select the manual macro again. And uh, I'm going to select the created uh, connection previously here and we can create a connection. Sorry again, maybe. We can do again, create connection. So I have similar one, we can do the same uh, actually for beam and column here and we can specify the center point here. 
So as you see, we have created the uh, hunch connection uh, from the manual macro. The next thing that I want to talk about are circular base plates. So to create a circular base plate, uh, first I would like to hide the pedestal here. Okay, we can hide the pedestal with hide selected command. Then uh, we have an end plate macro over here. You can select it. Then I'm going to select the column and show the center of the uh, column button point here. Uh, to uh, to get in the macro, you can press to the M button and Enter button. Okay. Now I would like to type in the extension length, for example, 100 millimeter. Okay. And I would like to transform uh, this plate to the circular plate. Also, thickness might be. 20 millimeter and material can be selected here. Okay, uh, the uh, next thing uh, that I want to show how we create the holes. So to do this again, I'm going to select the create bolt group connection uh, bolt group macro here. We can select the plate, then right click. Now I need to specify the X direction of the bolt group. So I can uh, use wireframe for this. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to double click on the bolts. We can transform this bolt to the hole here. And diameter, uh, let's add two millimeters uh, tolerance and uh, diameter might be 22 millimeter. Okay. In the position tab, uh, we can uh, create this uh, holes on the circular path. So I would like to create this holes to the circular uh, to convert this uh, to the circular path, and uh, the radius can be 160 millimeter. Let's type in eight. Uh, for the number of the holes. Okay, let's apply and click to the OK button. So uh, after this, uh, we can uh, place the anchors. Okay, so to do this, select the anchor button here, then right click in the empty space. Sorry. And select the plate here. So uh, the anchors, anchor bolts will be created for the each hole uh, on the base plate. So let's uh, remove the second nut of these anchors. Okay. For this purpose, I would like to get into macro properties, M and Enter button. So in the geometry tab, we can uh, specify zero value uh, for the second nut, then this uh, nut will be removed from the uh, view. Again, I would like to save uh, this connection as the manual macro. Okay. For this purpose, I will select all connection components here, and again, uh, I would like to say, uh, select manual macro icon. This time we can uh, type in, for example, circular base plate here. And type this time can be uh, in the global position here. Okay, let's create a new uh, group and retrieve as created members. So uh, as the main member, I'm going to select bottom node of this column so uh, I can use wireframe view uh, for this purpose here. Okay. And uh, we can save uh, and OK button to close this window. Again, I'm going to return to the realistic view here. 
So uh, let's copy this uh, macro to the similar uh, place. Okay. Again, I'm going to use manual macro over here. Select the circular base plate and create a connection. Okay. So again, Alt D button. Uh, you can select the center of the column. Sorry, let's do this again. Okay. So uh, let's do this again. Okay. Alt D. Okay, so as you see, uh, the circular base plate uh, has been generated here. We have also a notch macro here. Uh, we can use notch macro uh, for this kind of uh, connections. Uh, so to use this, we have a notch macro over here. So we can select this and select the main member. And you can specify the cut edge uh, for the selected member. Uh, now uh, we already created a hunch connection and circular base plate here. Okay.